How's it going, everybody? So I'm checking out Bed Bath & Beyond because I heard that it's doing some craziness. And let's see. Obviously, this isn't a company to, to buy into long term. I wouldn't. This is a potential trade company is to see if it goes up and you can make some fast money. Don't know. Um, really, all you need to know is it's, as everybody's saying, it's having a lot of trouble. It's not adapting and so forth. Um, so let's see here. You open the day. It's been this low before. Look at that. Okay, so January 6th. So January 6th, a month ago, it got to 131. And then people did a huge, <coughs> you know, triple, quadruple their money. money. Do you think that would happen again? That's the question. I'm considering looking at possibly trying to take advantage of this. Um, but it might go down even further. Uh, just because like right there so 258 and then as we said on the month back here it was at 162 so that's half you know so say you drop like five grand under this are you willing to lose 2500 right off the bat and do you have the patience to see if it goes back up and you have to be willing to lose it because um, if it don't it don't that's that's the whole concept when you when you play with socks like these this is gambling but it's not a sure loss like it would be at a casino. There is a possibility that it would rebound. No one knows. You know, it's possible that, you know, this would go down to two dollars, one dollar, and then it spikes to like two or three or even five again. Um, we don't know. That's the big thing about stock market gambling, as I call it. Anyway, uh, everybody knows what Bed Bath and Beyond is, so I'm not even gonna bother trying to explain all that. It's not the point of the video. The point of the video is seeing if it is worth throwing a gamble on. So let's see, one hour ago, Bed Bath & Beyond closes share offering. All right, let's check this article out for a minute. Bed Bath & Beyond closes funding in attempt to avoid bankruptcy. There we go. There's my email if anybody wants to know it. Um, let's see. Don't want to know that. I simply just want to read the article, if possible. Not the whole thing, but obviously. So Bed Bath & Beyond could receive a little more than $1 billion in gross proceeds from a stock offering in an attempt to avoid bankruptcy, the company announced today. Why it matters. So a, thou so a billion in gross proceeds from a stock offering. So that means they're wanting to make more shares, from what I understand, and raise a billion dollars. And that would dilute the already shares, which is causing the drop. That's my guess. Why it matters. Without the funding, the retailer would have likely had to file for bankruptcy protection, but has now bought itself some time to work out its next steps. Okay, so they're saying that it's still gonna they're still gonna be trading on this. But is it just gonna go down? You know, or is it gonna have a you know, like a meta did and have like a, a 25, 30 percent increase? You know, who knows? This is this is a toughie. Bed Bath & Beyond is raising $225 million via an offering of Series A convertible preferred stock, warrants to purchase Series A convertible preferred stock, and warrants to purchase the company's common stock. An additional $800 million of gross proceeds will be raised over time if certain conditions are met. Okay, so if certain conditions are met. Okay, so that's something to think about. The retailer added that it cannot give any assurances that it will receive all of the installment proceeds, however. So these are all just red flags, really. Saying that you gotta be willing to lose that money if you're gonna gamble on this stock. What's next? Bed Bath & Beyond will apply the net proceeds along with the 100 million drawn from that Thilo facility towards repaying the outstanding amount under its revolving credit facility. The company was able to amend its credit agreement to waive existing defaults and to use the availability under its credit facilities to make the missed interest payment on its senior notes by March 3rd. So it's not paying bills either, which everybody probably figured. The company can reborrow the repaid amounts under the revolver to fund general corporate purposes such as restocking inventory. <coughs> I don't know. It seems like... Uh, Bed Bath & Beyond has a lot of inventory because the Bed Bath & Beyond, where I live, has plenty of stuff. And it's pricey and expensive and people don't buy it. 
While the money will buy Bed Bath & Beyond without extra time, without incredible turnaround, the salt is likely. So, turnaround plan, the end result is still likely bankruptcy, says David Silverman, Senior Director at Fitch Ratings. So, I don't know, man. There is, you know, some possible money to be made here, but... Uh, you know, and that's just a just a turnaround thing, but it's it's tough. It is tough. Do you really want to risk it? You know, you could drop money into this. It could do a quick rebound, and you make a quick, quick cash. But uh, that's a huge risk. That is literally like going to a casino and dropping fifteen grand on red on roulette. Except you actually have less chance because you know they got zero and double zero here in the states, so. There's a 52% chance you'll lose and a 48% chance that you hit it. And if you're unlucky with most things in life, then you can literally say like 70% chance you lose and 30% chance you hit. So it's showing a lady with a big bag, which, uh, come on. She probably, yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to make it look good, I guess. Let's see all that stuff in there. I've been a Bed Bath & Beyond. I bought stuff there. It is expensive. Bed Bath & Beyond is closing 150 more stores just a week after the struggling retailer announced a closure of 87 locations. Okay, so that's 237 locations. Okay, now a quick thing when it comes to Monopoly, for instance, for any anybody out there that likes to play Monopoly. Um, when, you stall, when you start closing stores obviously you're not making any money right because your debt's still there you still got to pay it but except you're not producing cash so instead of closing stores you would think that they would be like okay let's just start lowering prices or something to that nature maybe i don't know how that goes maybe they have a partner they have to you know agree to lower prices on or so forth who knows but same as like in monopoly whenever you land on somebody else's spot you don't have enough money then you have to um I forget what the word's called. I haven't played Monopoly in years. But it's for, my, for the most part, we just say foreclose. You know, so you flip the card over, you get a little bit of money, and then that property then becomes something that you can trade to people, but you're no longer producing any cash on it. So it's kind of, you know, the location's still valuable, but it's not producing money for you, so it's just really bad, and that's pretty much what Bed Bath & Beyond is like. They're just a horrible Monopoly player, it looks like. The company's brick and mortar footprint has already shrunk dramatically. A regulatory filing showed late Monday, and the new closings mean it will have shuttered 400 stores in the past year. Wow. Almost half the 950 or so stores it had opened in February 2022. Okay, so yeah. Uh, definitely not a long term investment. The company sucks. We all know that. Don't put your money in here to, <laughs> you know, don't treat it like it's Coca-Cola or, uh, you know, anything like Johnson & Johnson, P, Procter & Gamble. It's not, nothing good like that. Google, Google's, you know, pretty good. Somebody mentioned that in one of my videos. They made a comment, and as Google's a good a good one. Um, it's a long-term thing. I mean, me specifically, whether by Coke, because I get paid dividends and it goes up in value. With Google, you don't get paid dividends, so I'd rather just do that. But, yeah, still a good one. That includes last week's announcement that it was also closing all 49 remaining Harmon face value stores, which sold cosmetics plus five bye-bye baby locations. A list of the new storage closures wasn't immediately available. Hmm. So a turnaround doesn't look imminent. <coughs> the embattled... Home Goods. Let me do that real quick. Lending Club. I don't, I don't even do anything with Lending Club. All right. Um, a turnaround doesn't look imminent. The embattled Home Goods chain forecast first sales quarters to be down by 30. Yeah, it's going to be way down. Nobody buys anything over there because it's just too expensive. So it's approved it thereafter. The company. Okay, so the company's definitely going down. Because it's too expensive. 
So you can read all these different things. They're closing a bunch of stuff. They have a lot of debt. They can't make it. They're trying to raise capital. They are freaking out. So they pretty much are like um, the Lehman Brothers, you know, when they had their thing. No one was backing them, but the other banks got bowed out and Lehman didn't. So kind of what Bed Bath & Beyond is. They are screwed, pretty much. Um, but what it comes down to is anybody going to try to buy this company, you know? Is, is there going to be some big, you know, company out there that's going to say, okay, let's move in on this. They, they know they're out. Maybe we, we can offer them some money, and then they buy the company, you know? But then the shareholders would get a little bit of money, I would think, you know? Who knows? We don't know. But hypothetically, um, shareholders would get some money if the company sold out. Maybe or they may get nothing. So th this is this is like the ultimate gamble, uh, for sure. Like I gamble on some of my stocks that I've shown in videos, you know, swing trades and other ones that I'm like, like Zim, you know, is kind of like a gamble. You know, I think Zim's a good company anyway. It's not going anywhere, so I play it. This one could go bye bye, so that's what makes it a huge, a huge one. But so today down. 48% pretty much. Man, that's crazy. But this could rebound 25% tomorrow or any of that. So, and this is simply just a swing trade one now for sure. There's nothing more to this than it just being swing trades. I think I'm going to wait cuz this was at 131. I think this one under that much pressure I think this could go down more tomorrow. So here it is, February 7th, 1 p.m. almost, um, Central Standard Time here in the States. This is something that I'm going to potentially want to just play a little bit on, simply as a gamble, just just a gamble, you know, to swing trade something maybe. That's all this is now. Um, yeah, so... Maybe, but I think I'm going to wait a little bit more. I think there's more pain. Uh, there might be a dead cat bounce tomorrow, but I think there's more pain. And I'm going to wait and see more news, but I might I might turn around and jump on this just to see if there's you, you know can make some quick turnaround cash. Because Jerome Powell did a speech already, so... There's no speech coming in saying, oh, you know, we're going to, you know, stop with the increasing, you know, the, the cost of, fine, you know, borrowing money and all that. I can't think of it. I've been busy all day. But, yeah, so this is one that I would think people should check into if you just want to swing trade it. Um, but go on the concept that you could lose all of that, you know. But I'm going to wait because I think there's more pain. If that hits out in a dollar something range. I might throw a few thousand on this just to see if I can get a quick turnaround um, simply for that reason. But I want to wait and see what more news comes out. But I thought this was an interesting one to check out. There's plenty of videos on YouTube. People are posting about it, I'm sure. So just check it out and see what's up. But me personally, with my account, um, if this drops like like down here, like into this like dollar fifty range, maybe $1.70, um, I might throw a few thousand on this just to see if I can't get a quick turnaround and make a little bit of profit on it. But long term, of course not. But that's kind of my take on it, and that's what I'll plan to do. It is Tuesday, so we have three more trading days in a week, and let's see what's up. Tell me what you think about it. Uh, Y'all have a good one.